Hi, it's Darnell with Play Loving Recipes. I got myself another new toy here. This is the Melty Crisp Lid. This turns your pressure cooker into an air fryer or a crisper, depending on how you choose to use it. But it's basically like um, you may have heard of the Ninja Foodie. This kind of turns your pressure cooker, or it does pretty much turn your pressure cooker into a Ninja Foodie because you can use it to pressure cook like you would normally your pressure cooker. And then you put this on, you swap out your lid, and you uh, swap the power that you're using for this lid, and then you can do your crisping and your air frying. So just like the Ninja Foodie has a lid for air frying and a lid for pressure cooking, your pressure cooker uses its normal lid for pressure cooking, and you swap on this for your air frying. And basically with this, you can use it on an 8 or a 6 quart pressure cooker. It fits basically most any 8 or 6 quart pressure cooker. For this product, I usually when I do an unboxing and review, I usually um, you know bring it out of the box that it came shipped in. But in this case, Melfi, they don't ship like a lot of other companies. Like other companies, they ship and they have their name on the packaging and on the label and they send you a tracking number. Melfi doesn't do that. When you order, they tell you your order is processed. They don't send you a tracking number or anything. And then you get a package from a company called the Stephen Gould Company, which is like a a shipping type of company through UPS. So basically it comes through UPS and the label has Stephen Gould on it. And that's who they, I guess, use to help them ship their products. But it's a little uh, disconnected because they don't send you a tracking number or anything. So I had to make sure that I opened the box to make sure that it was what I wanted it to be before I uh, actually did it on video. I may have unboxed the wrong thing. But anyway, this is our Melfi Crisp Lid. And we're going to go ahead and unbox it right now and get into a further deep dive review of this melty crisp lid so we can do air frying in our pressure cooker. So it starts off with some documentation. They also have a, a PDF form of this you can get through their website. They have their own trivet that you use instead of your trivet with their, uh, their air frying type of lid. They also give you some other accessories like this uh, pad. This is a silicone pad to basically put the lid on when it's hot. Basically, when you take the hot lid off using their pressure cooking, I mean their air frying lid, you need a place to put it. You're supposed to be able to put it right on the silicone pad, and it can be super hot. You put it on there, and it'll still be able to be okay. You don't put it on like a table, a wooden table or anything. You put this on your your countertop that is heat resistant and it should be fine. They give you some silicone tongs. So, you know, if you needed some silicone tongs to use when you're getting food out, they send you a set with the crisp lid. This is their air frying basket. So if you're doing air frying, basically you take the trivet, you put it into your pressure cooker, you put the air fry basket on it, and you can do your air frying. This is not a huge air fry basket, so you're basically going to be doing some small scale. I mean, I guess you compare it to the size of my wrist and my watch. It's not big. I mean, you're not going to hold, I don't even know if you can hold maybe two burgers in there. I don't even know if you can hold two whole burgers in there at once. You're not going to do any large scale air frying with that basket. So. And, and here's the lid. This is the actual lid. It's uh, got you know the heating element up here. And it's got some air vents around the sides. It's got its controls up top here. We'll go through all of those. But this is basically all that comes with the crisp lid itself and its accessories that you use with your pressure cooker. All right, so here's my pressure cooker. This is a six quart instant pot. And uh, this is the pressure cooker lid that comes with it. Basically, if you're doing the air fry thing, you, you know, take this lid off, you can put it, you know, set it aside. You wouldn't use the instant pot um, power core like I mentioned and you have to use the steel pot I have a ceramic pot in here you cannot use this 
with the melty crisp lid. And so here's the steel pot. You can only use the steel pot with your air fryer, your melty, you know, air frying type of lid. So you put the trivet in, you put the air fry basket in, as you can see there, and then you put the melty crisp lid on and it fits nicely on top. And you you'd have the handle down when you're cooking and you basically plug it in to power to power it. It's got the three prong uh, power cord or power jack so that you've got your grounded you know, power. Now if you're going to basically do some pressure cooking of food and then you want to crisp over it afterwards using this lid, you have to be sure to remove the excess fluid before you start using this crisp lid. You're not supposed to you know, just go from like maybe pressure cooking some ribs still have all the fluid in the pot and then trying to crisp and you have to move, remove all that fluid. I think that's a little bit of a challenge because you've got a hot pot full of fl hot fluid and then you're basically going to have to try and remove that fluid and get this lid on here to do your crisping. For me, for something that I'm cooking that has a lot of fluid, it's probably just going to be easier to take some tongs, take the meat out and put it on like a baking pan or on a uh, crisper tray or something for an air fryer or something else and just cook it in like an air fryer or a toaster oven or you know if you got an oven you know it's probably just going to be easier just to move it over into another cooker than to try and remove excess fluid from a hot pot and then get the lid on here to do your uh, crisping but you can let me know in a comment how you feel about that. Now something small that you uh, cooked in the pressure cooker that has excess fluid you can also you know remove the fluid then put it in your trivet and your air fry basket you know, if it's something big, then of course you just would remove the fluid and not put in their trivet and air fry basket. If you want to use theirs to crisp something that you cooked in the pressure cooker and you want to use this for crisping purposes. Now for air frying, your air frying recipes are supposed to work the same way they do in your air fryer with this melty crisp lid. You might have to adjust the time or temp just a little bit depending on your experience, but it's supposed to work just like an air fryer when you put their trivet and air fry basket in and you use it as an air fryer. You're not supposed to um, go over the full line here. You know, you don't want anything going up into your heating element on your crisp lid, but it's supposed to work just like your air fryer would. Now, if you cook something in the uh, pressure cooker that doesn't have a lot of excess fluid, then this lid would come in very handy to be able to put a nice crisp on it because then you don't have to worry about removing excess fluid let's say you did some type of maybe casserole or something in your uh, pressure cooker and it didn't have a lot of excess fluid and you just want to crisp the top you can put this uh, crisp lid on and just crisp it after you've done your pressure cooking now one thing they do point out in the manual is that this is not a deep fry you're not supposed to put oil in here and try and do deep frying with this that'll void your warranty so you know it's supposed to work like an air fryer now you're not supposed to use uh, this crisp lid with like the sealed pot and pot method some of you may be familiar with where you use um, basically pots that you could seal. You're not supposed to use sealed pots with this melty crisp lid. Let's say you cook some lasagna in a pot. You're supposed to open that pot up and you could probably put that pot on a trivet and then use the crisp lid to kind of crisp over your lasagna that way. Now this crisp lid is rated at 1000 watts and it weighs three and a quarter pounds. All right, so let's go ahead and plug the melty crisp lid in. You can see the cord length is just like maybe a standard three foot cord. I'm just going to plug it in. As soon as I plug it in, it lights up here. And the controls are pretty basic controls. All right, you can see the controls, they default to a 30 minutes cooking time and a 375 cooking temperature kind of flashes back and forth but it's pretty simple if you want to adjust your temperature you press the temperature button and you can press minus to lower temperature plus to add temperature does it in 25 degree increments up to like 500 degrees Fahrenheit they say if you cook at 450 or above do it no more than 20 minutes and give like a 10 minute rest between times that you cook that hot and it goes down, sorry for the noise, but the lowest you can go is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So between 3 and 500 degrees Fahrenheit is all it can do. You're not going to do like your dehydration or anything like that 
with this crisp lid. You can adjust your time by pressing the time button and press down. You can go down in uh, increments of minutes. The lowest is basically one minute. The highest you can go is an hour. And then you basically got your stop and your play, or your, your stop your cook and your start your cook buttons that start and stop your cook. When you lift the handle, it's like a pause in the cook. And you can like do what you need to do, put your handle back down, then hit, then hit uh, the play button again to start your cook going again. You don't want to leave the handle up for too long. When you leave the handle up for too long, it basically defaults back to the last setting used. So that's what will happen if you leave the handle up too long. So you don't want to leave the handle up too long. You pull it up to do what you got to do, put it down and restart your cook again. You can adjust whether or not you want to have a volume, audible volume like you've been hearing. If you want, you can just hold this stop button. And you see it went to S off. So now sound is off, so no more sound. If I hit uh, temperature now, there's no beeping. No more of that excessive beeping. Time, no excessive beeping. Of course, this means uh, when your cook's done, you might not get any audible beeps when your cook's done either. But you can hold the stop button again, and you just hold it for a moment, and it switches to S on, then your sound's back on again. Now for mine, since I'm usually keeping an eye on things, I'm going to just hold it and turn that sound back off again and we'll just operate from this point without any of that excess sound or beeping. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a uh, heat test, an ambient heat test. I'm going to put my trivet into the pressure cooker pot here. I'm going to put an ambient probe here on the trivet so I can measure the ambient temperature inside the pot while things are heating. I want to test how hot things get compared to an ambient probe basically checking the temperature. And even though I turned sound off, I got a beep when I put that lid down, so maybe it will beep when I cook or something is done. But at this point what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically lower the temperature well, it seems like I turned my beeping off, but it came back. So, let's see here. If I hold this button, now sound went off again. So, it seems like the sound came back when I lifted the lid or something. Yeah, when I lifted the lid. Yeah, so when I lift the lid, it loses that setting that I put in for the sound. So, it's like you can't totally kill the sound and it remember to kill the sound. It brings it back. It's a little annoying, but anyway. We're going to go down to temperature down to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The time, I'm going to leave it, well I'm going to turn it down to 10 minutes. Alright, so I've got 10 minutes, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I've got my ambient probe on here. It's showing just 77 degrees inside the pot at the moment, or 76. And so I'm going to hit the start button, and then I'm going to let it, you know, measure how hot things get. In 10 minutes, does it really get to 300 degrees or hotter? Let's see. It's got a pretty nice uh, glow in there when you turn it on. The fan is... Uh, it's a kind of medium loudness, you know, it's not too bad, but it is uh, pretty audible. Alright, so, you know, just not even 90 seconds have passed and that light went out. So maybe it thought that it's hit 300. We're reading about 277 on our ambient probe, so a little cooler, maybe 25 degrees cooler than their uh, their temperature that they think things are. Maybe, I guess, you know, obviously since they've got to have whatever ambient probe they have somewhere up here in the top of the cooker, they're uh, basically measuring the heat that's rising up. So they're going to get probably a higher temperature up here than the 
probe that's a little lower down than the pot but things in the pot don't really reach the full 300 but I'm sure it probably does a pretty good job of whatever it needs to cook at that tent with that uh, heating element so close but at this point what I'm going to do I'm going to see if I can up the temperature so I'm going over here to temperature and I'm bumping it up so now I've bumped it up to 500 so we're going to see what happens bumping this temp up to 500 degrees we see we've been going for you know a little bit of time oh I think I paused it I oh, know I didn't so it's going ahead and it's going to continue with that so it's at 500 now let's see how hot this gets it got hot pretty fast last time it's already crossing over 300 so we'll give it a moment all right so the heating has gone out you know it thinks it's at 500 now it's lighting up again but basically we're reading ambient temperatures in the 430s we're not even hitting 450 for our ambient probe so this cooker cooks a little bit on the low side of the cooking heat spectrum when it comes to cooking things and with it being just 1000 watts of cooking power or you know heat power I think that's probably why we're coming in on that lower end of heat it's not as powerful as some other air fryers out there that have a lot more wattage and have a lot more heating elements and can produce a lot more heat but this one gets up into like maybe the 430s or so when you're setting it to 500 so that's what you basically get here we're gonna we're gonna see how hot this gets before it cuts out again last time it got there it is again it gets like 438 cuts out so that's about as hot as it's gonna let things get before it shuts them down so I'm gonna stop there and we'll just uh, leave it like that for now and let things uh, supposed to be able to get the lid off right and set it on this silicone pad so we'll just set that there we'll just let things cool down a bit alright so while things are cooling down I just wanted to mention I'm going to just shut the eye grill ambient probe off while things are cooling off but just wanted to mention some things you can cook big and small items in this uh, in the pressure cooker with this crisp lid you can do like a whole chicken and you can use the trivet if you want if you um, you know have something that is big but isn't like a whole chicken that would just fit on a trivet or use the air fry basket but you got like a whole chicken you could put your whole chicken in there you know without the trivet or the air fry basket put your crisp lid on and just air fry your whole chicken if you want to do that now if you're doing like a whole chicken in the pressure cooker you want to use like the trivet that came with like your instant pot or your whatever pressure cooker you have since that trivet that usually comes with these pressure cookers sets lower you could put that trivet in put your chicken in and then cook it and then more easily pull it out with your trivet that's one exception where they say use other accessories than the ones they give if you're going to cook like a whole chicken now for cleaning the uh, melty crisp lid basically everything is dishwashable except for the lid itself you can basically wipe the inside of the crisp lid with a damp cloth and in, over time the inside of that lid may discolor you can use like a little white vinegar to clean any discoloration that gets into the uh, glass of the crisp lid the melty crisp lid comes with a one year limited warranty and you can go to the melty app and they have lots of different recipes that you can use if you you know want to get some help with the recipes they have an app for that and a lot of it, recipes in the app for using the crisp lid all right so I let things cool down and let's test actually cooking up some of the greatest french fries in the world checkers <laughs> rally's famous frozen fries famous season fries uh, nobody paid me to say that by the way um, I'm putting my air fryer basket into my pressure cooker and this will be the first time I air fry something in my pressure cooker this is going to be interesting stuff I'm just pouring the fries in there I don't have a, a lot of fries left to work with here so I'm just going to basically shake these around and this little bit of fries that I have is basically enough to pretty much cover this little air fry basket you know it's just the 
diameter of the pot so not a lot of room at all so going to put the melty crisp lid on and get that in place there and put this uh, handle down and I'm going to up the temperature to 400 now it's not beeping so that's good it, it is remembering not to beep now now I'm going to set the time I've got the time set to 10 minutes so let's do the 10 minutes and see what it does to these fries in 10 minutes I'll bring you on back um, in about 10 minutes all right, while things are cooking, I just wanted to show you real quick. You can always see kind of on the side here how things are cooking along. It's only been going for about a minute, 15 seconds so far, so there's like over eight minutes left in this cook. But you can always see your food cooking through the glass on the side rims of this melty crisp lid. I like that, to be able to see my food cooking so I know if it's overcooking or something, I can get it out of there. So I'll bring you back in a bit. All right, we're coming down to the last 10 seconds of this cook, and those fries are looking very crispy in there, so I think it has cooked them up pretty well. And now it's done. It's completed the cook. And it doesn't give any extra beeping or anything to tell me it's done because I turned my beep off. It seems like now it remembers I told it not to beep. So there are fries. They look like they've been cooked pretty decent. Right, I'm going to get a few of these fries out just for taste testing. They sound crisp. So let's get the camera adjusted and do some taste testing. All right, here are our French fries from the Melty Crisp Lid. You know, on my taste test, I don't use any extra condiments. I want to see exactly what the cooker did without anything interrupting or impeding the test. So here we go. I'll try another. All right, so the Melty Crisp Lid, although it's a small heating element, only a thousand watts of power, it can air fry. So in this case, got my, uh, my french fries, totally cooked, and they came out decent. In just 10 minutes, that works pretty nice. You know, it's not gonna do like a whole ton of fries. It's not gonna do as many as say, um, you know, maybe your power air fryer of an Elite, or many of the other cookers, it's not gonna be able to do as many as those just doesn't hold as much you know for something like fries you know they say it can do a whole chicken they say you know you can do other things in it but it's a smaller heating element it's less power you have to you know take that in consideration if you're doing a whole lot of serious air frying you know it seems like maybe you'd want to just get yourself an air fryer but if you're doing some smaller scale air frying this seems like a nice fit and you know this is a nice way to avoid the expense of a ninja foodie you can basically just get this um, melty crisp lid, use it with your existing pressure cooker, and you're good to go. So I do like this melty crisp lid for what it is. You know, I don't see it as, you know, a whole full up cooker. It's just a attachment lid, and it does what they say it can. Do. They said that it can do. It does it, and so it's a nice add-on, a nice accessory to consider getting, to you know, do yourself some air frying in your pressure cooker if that's what you'd like to do. And so, uh, you know, I'll see about doing some other things with this over time. Since this is not its own dedicated cooker, I don't know if I'll be doing like any extended later, you know, 30 day review or something like that of it because it's going to be something that I use now and then more than on an every single day basis. It's a smaller, you know, very small uh, crisper basket there, a very small air fryer basket. I can't really, you know, do a lot of the meals that I want to do on that on a daily basis, that small basket. So, you know, I'll probably be using it some and doing some cook videos, but it won't be something that I use every day just because of the size limitations of the basket. But anyway, it can do the work and we'll do some more with it. And so I definitely want to hear your comments and your thoughts about the Melty Crisp Lid. Are you thinking about getting one? You know, let me know. Also, you can find plenty of recipes, heating instructions at SuperWaveOvenRecipes.com. Always come to this YouTube channel through WaveOvenRecipes.com, Twitter and Instagram, WaveOvenRecipes, Podcast, Anchor.fm slash WaveOvenRecipes. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share the video with a friend, subscribe to the channel, and good eating.